Um, so let's talk about, before we get into the book of Romans today, let's talk about um, balloons. <laughs> and um, so listen, uh, the issue is not that uh, the balloon issue uh, had various types of, now we know, uh, sensing capabilities, data gathering capabilities, obviously photographing capabilities, but the balloon was or could have been uh, platformed for a ele uh, electron uh, magnetic pulse bomb, which is exactly a perfect delivery system for an EMP. Uh, the problem is, it was at 62,000 feet, the balloon. Yeah, guys, you guys, I'm assuming you all know what I'm talking about. Okay. And, um, but also, uh, that capability uh, is also able to carry a tactical nuclear weapon. Tactical meaning, instead of a, a nuclear bomb blowing up an entire country, a tactical nuclear can blow up, say, like a state. It's used to intimidate, by the way. A tactical a nuclear weapon would be used to pinpoint a devastating blow to a small area. And that's how you would get your enemy to capitulate or to surrender. It's a very, it's a very smart way of modern warfare. Uh, they didn't invent it. We did. We had tactical nukes first. Um, in fact, more on that later. Uh, but with all of that said, uh, let's remember that uh, for the course of the last six years, China has been sending balloons over various parts of the world. This is not new. It's just that you're never told. There are websites where you can find out on your own, but I have a website where I can actually track. It's posted. Uh, you can track various n n uh, balloons from various nations. Russia does it. We do it. We did it first. China does it. Uh, it's, it's nothing new to hang a balloon over a country and spy on them. I just want you to know that. He said, how could they do that? <laughs> we taught them how. <laughs> okay, we've been doing this for a long time. Um, but it, it doesn't mean you fluff it off either. That's right. Okay? So, the United States Air Force started tracking the balloons, plural, shortly after takeoff deep in Chinese territory. Uh, they were launched from a military platform at a base, military base, in China. Just like we have our critical, our most critical military bases are in the inland interior of the United States. Anybody know why? For not only protection reasons, but for uh, geometry, geological, uh, not geological, uh, geometry or uh, telemetry re reasons. It's, it's best for us to have our nuclear arsenal be launched from the center of the United States because from the center of the U.S. you can go over the globe or under the globe much quicker, okay? So they, they have the same thing in China. We were told that they were weather balloons, not to worry. Remember that? Don't worry, they're just weather balloons. And, uh, but our Air Force knew better. In fact, it was quite a few, um, a little over a week ago, where the United States Air Force, uh, based in Alaska, announced to the Department of Defense and to the Biden administration that these balloons had been launched. It's routine, but it's part of the announcement. It's part of the uh, guardians of, of American interest. Uh, the, the balloons uh, traversed into Alaskan airspace. Alaska, uh, as a state, notified the Department of Defense, who already knew about it, but as you know, every state has its own Air Force, and the Alaskan Air National Guard wanted to take it out, as is protocol. Okay, you're supposed to do this. Does anybody remember Francis Gary Powers? Do you remember he was shot down by the Russian Soviet Union? Our guy got shot down over the Soviet Union. Do you remember that? Flying a U-2 spy plane, and he got shot down. And he was in, he was in prison. They, he, it was in a Russian gulag. Uh, what could we do about that? Answer, nothing. Why? We were spying. We were in a place we were not supposed to be. And you just, you just got to roll with it. It's, it's what nations do every day of the week. 
Um, and so what you do when somebody invades your airspace, that's a hostile nation, or you detect that it could be a hostile nation, in this case, China is a hostile nation, just ask Japan, just ask uh, Singapore, just ask Taiwan, uh, ask, just ask South Korea, they're a problem. Alaska should have taken it down. Uh, Biden administration refused to give orders. Tragically, it floated into Canadian airspace, and the Ca Canadians just found out <laughs> that it had come and gone <laughs> from their country. But Canada's not worried, because Canada knows in a normal America, we would protect Canada at all costs because we would never let a bad guy take over Canada. So Canada leans on the United States. The problem with Canadians this morning is they don't have an America to lean on anymore. So they're pretty much on their own, as is Japan and South Korea. But the Air Force did know, let's not slam and bash our military. They knew and they notified the proper authorities. They notified Barack Obama and, <laughs> and Bill Gates and George Soros. Uh, they notified the deep state. Don't get upset with Joe Biden. That's not fair, and I mean that. I'm being, I mean it. Do not get upset with Joe Biden. He, he has nothing to do with this stuff. No, I'm serious. If you think I'm kidding you, go look and see what Barack Obama said. He said, prior to the election, the greatest thing for me is if somebody else could be elected and I could run the country from the basement of my house. Quote Barack Obama. Joe Biden, listen, he get, honestly, I'm not joking. Have you watched the footage of him lost on the White House lawn? Literally lost. I'm not making fun of him. People, you need to know, stop blaming him. It's not right, it's, uh, in fact, it's mean. The man, it's sad. It's sad, I feel bad for him. He's being used. Back to the balloons. <laughs> the United States continues to operate with same and greater capabilities of our balloons. And um, it's no secret. Uh, a... I say in this sense that I, what is happening or what has happened is that in a lot of my sources, I'll give you in a moment, but uh, not all of them, but one of them is on media and that right now, the expert in China, Gordon Chang, listen to everything he says. He doesn't mess around. China successfully launched and completed a mission which not only gathered data once it left Chinese airspace, but all along the way in route, continue to communicate and record military intelligence back to Beijing. We are currently, as, as of this moment, we are out off the coast of uh, the Carolinas, retrieving uh, the key vital parts of the debris. Uh, but the damage has already been done because this was not a data gathering device. It was never intended to land somewhere and get picked up. This constantly communicated data back to Beijing via satellite. Do you all get that? Whatever it was gathering, it already delivered. So the, the, it's worthless, uh, frankly. Uh, it's, it's good for nothing. Um, China was successfully able to penetrate Canadian airspace without uh, a deterrent uh, issued by the Canadian military. China was also able to uh, penetrate U.S. airspace without any deterrent uh, being issued by the Biden administration and the Department of Defense. Uh, conveniently enough, China was successfully, uh, or was successful at getting uh, a weather balloon to uh, stick in the atmosphere and pause and stay stationary over uh, Malmstrom Air Force Base in Montana for many hours as it gathered data, which is our key location for our nuclear silo, or ICBM, intercontinental ballistic missile uh, sites. The, the number one defense site uh, for the United States is uh, Minot, uh, North, North, right? Minot, North Dakota, uh, Montana, and there's a third, and I'm sorry, I'm forgetting which one it is. Um, 
But the, uh, and by the way, there's their website. You can go to, the, uh, to that uh, Air Force Base's website right there. It tells you all about their mission. Their mission is to protect us against uh, dangers that this, this uh, balloon could have been uh, to us. If the age old adage is true, you are what you eat, then America uh, is a sucker yet again. We were a sucker on December 7th, 1941. We were a sucker on September 11th, 2001. And we're, we've been a sucker again because our government is telling our military, stand down, stand down uh, regarding this issue. Again, our military did what they're supposed to do, but they can only go so far and then they need presidential uh, direction. Uh, China did apologize to the United States for invading our territory, uh, but confronted uh, us by saying that uh, the weather balloon posed no threat to the United States. <laughs> did you get that? Yeah. Quote by jo uh, Gordon Chang this morning, China is systematically showing the world that the U.S. has no will to act like a world leader and may even lack the capability of defending itself. Uh, Chang went on, that's spelled wrong, but Chang went on to say that China has already in the last 18 months exerted its pressure, authority, and dominance, not only in the Pacific, but also in South America and North Africa. We have watched as China has created the fastest growing military on earth today, this is just the latest display of Beijing testing our resolve, uh, uh, testing our response and resolve, which left unchecked could lead to war. It's quite a statement, but he's the expert. And um, there is, um, I want to show you this quote by Admiral Michael Gilday, Chief of Naval Operations. The United States may only have a few years to prepare for a war that could decide the course of the remainder of this century. I don't like that quote. The United States should never have to prepare. The United States should always be prepared. You don't get ready, you stay ready. And uh, that is a very, very unnerving quote in my, in my opinion. You guys, you wanna uh, turn the video, uh, turn the tape? The enormous balloon drifted for days, first entering American airspace over Alaska before heading southeast over Montana, Missouri, and the Carolinas. In the wake of the balloon shooting, the Chinese government threatening repercussions, calling it a serious violation of international practice. That's just TV. That's Both political sides laugh at those comments. You're supposed to make those comments. It, it's it's uh, meaningless. Um, the, the certain domestic, the, the, the present domestic, domestic situation in China is what's leading to all of this. Um, I know you're going to find this hard to believe when everything in your closet uh, is, is, made, is made in China. You're going you're gonna to say, no, wait a minute. In fact, including my, your computer. You know, Apple boasts itself. I don't know if you ever look at clo take a close look at Apple's packaging, Apple computer. It says uh, created or uh, designed in Cupertino in Sil Silicon Valley, California. And then beneath that, it says made in China. And that is the truth. Uh, and as so many others. Okay, in fact, much of the computer industry that you and I know of, it's not even really made up in Silicon Valley anymore. Um, if you want to see the new Silicon Valley, you have to go to Israel. You have to land in Tel Aviv and head north, and you'll go up the main highway, and you'll see Apple and Hewlett Packard and Raytheon, and that's where all of the brains are at in Israel. Uh, but it's a weird deal that's going on in the world right now, but check this out, everybody. This is why Russia, or excuse me, China's got to do something. Uh, China is in a severe economic position right now, severe. They're doing everything possible to spin it as though they're okay. They're not okay at all, economically. China has a radical, horrific, in fact, it's unsustainable population decline. For decades, China killed their children. 
for population control. And you can't do that long until it turns around and bites you. And it bit them. And so China doesn't have enough people. You say, Jack, they got billions of people. China's a huge place. But a lot of those people are dying from malnutrition and immune diseases and sicknesses because they're so poor. It's a real big problem. They not only did not make babies, they got sick and died and they're dying. This drives, and you can read more about this, again, in Gordon Chang's latest book. Most in China are undernourished and there is a current, I just mentioned that, lack of food production. Doesn't take an Einstein to put that together. Why is California leading all 50 states? The number one state in the United States selling land to China is California. What kind of land are they buying? Are they buying downtown LA? No. Farms and dairies. I had one of America's largest beef producers, who's a Christian, very, very wealthy man, tell me to my face. He said, Jack, we raise our cattle here in the Midwest, and the Chinese have bought all of the food processing plants. Uh, one, head, one, one, one steer or one, one cow, or I don't know what the terminology is, is cut up into four pieces, packaged, shipped to China, wrapped into chuck steak, pork, or not pork, but beef and, and ribs and, and uh, filet mignon, and shipped back to the United States, and he said all within just over a week's period of time, and it's sold in your local store after taking a trip to China. And it says, it says, made in America, USDA approved? It is. It's amazing. Um, so it makes sense why they're buying so much land to produce food. They need food really bad. You say, well, that's weird. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird unless they have malicious ideas about knowing that we are such a woke culture that if... If they showed up in San Francisco and Los Angeles and San Diego and Seattle, we would probably surrender. And if we wouldn't surrender, then all they'd have to do to our young people is say, we're, taking, we're gonna take your cell phone and you have to work for us all day and then you can have it at night. Okay, <laughs> sounds good to me. We have no will to defend ourselves clearly. We've sent a message to the world that we're not interested in defending our allies' airspace. We can't even, won't even defend our airspace. I was somewhat embarrassed this morning, as maybe you were. Again, I, I'm not taking this away from our military. But it's a pretty sad day when politicians and military individuals at the Pentagon say, including our president, we need to recognize the brave pilot of that F-22 fighter who took down that balloon. Any five-year-old with a BB gun can take down a balloon. <laughs> Are you telling me that that's a, that's a military achievement? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. To use an F-22 to shoot a hole in a balloon? And then we did it wrong on top of it. It's made of hydrogen. You don't shoot a missile with an explosive warhead on the top tip and blow up a balloon that you're concerned what it carries. Do you know that we could have sent that same Sidewinder missile right through that balloon unarmed and it would have just put a hole in it? And it would have gently, gently just come down to earth. And then bottom line is this. Uh, why would we wait until it's completely traversed the entire 50 states including Alaska, and then it gets out over the ocean, and then the president says, shoot it down. Because it had gathered the data it needed to get. And here's the most unnerving thing at all. Roll the tape. We are seeing, for instance, um, the Communist Party cadres are going to factory owners and telling them to switch their production from consumer items to items for the Chinese military. As a matter of fact, 
Um, there have been so many of these orders to domestic manufacturers that the Communist Party is actually running factories once owned by private entrepreneurs because the private entrepreneurs don't want to stick around for Xi Jinping's war, as they put it. So we can see that this is starting to be a total society effort, and we're just not paying attention. That's one of the real risks, and that is that China is preparing to go to war, and we're being oblivious. What do you think of that? Do we believe that? We don't want to believe it. China has confiscated private industries and converted their production lines into military production. We did that when we were getting ready to go to war against Adolf Hitler and the Japanese Empire. China's doing it now. You better make sure your soul is right with Jesus, first of all. Okay? Second thing is, all of this is right and correct. For those of you who hang around me, I don't make this public, but everybody I know, cl close, I have been saying for years now, you know what? When I see what's happening in our schools, or our military being taught this instead of that, if I were China, you know I've been walking around saying, if I were China, why? If I were China, what? I'd take advantage of it. But it's more than that. Have you ever read your Old Testament? A lot of people don't want you to read your Old Testament. Well, according to God's word, that when his people who are called by his name, that includes, that's America, Israel and America. There's the only two covenantal nations on earth. Our founding fathers made a covenant, the Pilgrim Fathers, with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And apparently God blessed it because you've been living in it for the last technically 400 years. According to God's Bible, when a nation that knows him departs from him, he dries up the rain, he sends locusts or bugs to consume their crops, he says their women will miscarry, and wherever you go, you'll be terrified because you'll feel as though you're constantly under attack, you'll be looking over your shoulder all the time in paranoia, and here's the clincher. And he said, if you don't listen, I will send your enemies to invade you. Thank you. That's, exactly what he does. That's what God's Bible says. Will America be invaded? The answer is not if, it's when. No nation lasts forever. And the only country or nation that will is Israel. And America had better get back to its God.